Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of the Wine Science Commentary. My name is Lawrence and in today's topic we will look at a paper which compared old vineyards and young vineyards over a period of three years. Highly interesting as always, so stay tuned for this and um, if you like the kind of content of course hit the subscribe button down below. That's all what I have to say, I would say we dive right into it. Today's topic or today's paper is called The Effect of Vine Age on Vine Performance of Shiraz in the Barossa Valley, Australia, published in 2017 in the Australian Journal of Grape and Wine Research. And the head researcher here was Dylan Grick with the University of Adelaide. So it is this guy here, handsome young man. He states here that he has uh, 20 years of experience in viticulture. And it seems that our paper was actually his PhD thesis. And yeah, that's all the information I have about him. Thanks for your effort, my friend. Let's dive right into the paper. Introduction. Old vineyards are often highly regarded, producing wines that are often sought after and highly priced and priced due to perceived wine quality. The concept that creates the vine age positively influences wine quality is long standing, but we also have to say here that we don't have a clear evidence supporting the idea that all the vines produce you know, the more complex wines or the better quality at all. But here we have in the Barossa Valley, we have a big pool of old vineyards, especially because Phylloxera didn't make it to Southern Australia. Of course it is in Australia, but not in Southern Australia. So you have a lot of old vineyards there, um, which date back to almost 200 years. So let's see this here they created therefore in the Barossa this old vine charter to promote and classify vineyards and you see here that they call old vines the ones that are older than 35 years of age then they have the so-called survivor vines which are greater or equal, uh, or equal than 70 years of age the centenarian wines are greater or equal than 100 years and the ancestor wines are over 125 years of age impressive and we all know, of course, this vineyard here or this winery, the Hanschke family, which have, you know, the, the, the Hill of Grace vineyard, which was planted 1860. Um, and if you want to buy a bottle, then of course you have to uh, be able to afford it 800 bucks for the 2012 one. Um, but I also had the pleasure once to try it and it is amazing. It ages very well. But if it's worth 800 euros, I certainly don't know. Then the uh, oldest commercial vineyard seems to be this one. Turkey Flat Vineyards, 1847 plantation date. And it's cheaper. It costs only 200 bucks. So you get four bottles of this compared to you know what we would spend on one bottle of the Penske Hill of Grace vineyard. Then the world oldest vine is 450 years old as it seems in the Slovenia. It is in Slovenia in Maribor. Look at this. They even created like a 3D animation page here where you can look at the vine. It of course is caged here so nobody can step inside and mess with it. But it is massive. It's very nice. It has a huge canopy. I'd like to see it one day. Maybe I have the chance. But back to our paper. Several studies have investigated the influence of vine age in the past. And the main findings from these are summarized in Table 1. We're going to look at Table 1 in just a second. To date, there has been a distinct lack of published literature which attempts to investigate vine age in relation to vine performance. Despite this, it is not uncommon to find acknowledgement of the phenomenon in a wide range of media from trade journals to books and peer-reviewed journals already cited. So whenever you read something about old wines, how good the quality is, then always take that with a grain of salt, of course. Summary of findings from previous wine age related studies. So there have been some studies in the field of old vines, you know, and here we have some results. For instance, Reynolds found that old wines had higher yields, bunch number and bunch mass and berry mass and lower total soluble solids. This Swiss study found that older vines had higher titrable acidity, uh, yeast, assimilable nitrogen and pruning mass. Age had no impact on sugar concentration. Then this other Australian publication said that older wines had lower vigor and very number per bunch and so on and so forth. So if you want to read up, up on that, here are the sources, check it out. What did they actually do in this case here? 
So they looked at five different sites. Every site um, was planted to an old vineyard and to a young vineyard. And these vineyards were all commercial um, vineyards, so in production. And the age gap between the young and the old vineyard was quite large. So 56 years for site one, 79 years for site two and so on. And then for site four, we even have 151 years of age gap between the young and old vineyard. So quite, you know, some, some gap in between. So the old vineyards here were very old and the young vineyards were quite young, so to speak. Then what is unique about this experiment is that all young vines at each site were vegetatively propagated via hardwood, hardwood cuttings from the older vines located at the same site. And all vines are growing on own roots. So that means no rootstocks used. We have Vitis vinifera root, rootstock in this case, and that already minimizes our variation in this experiment because we have the same genotype uh, in rootstock. That's very interesting. And yeah, so every vineyard um, was, or for each vineyard, they had three replicates, and every replicate consisted of four to five wines. So that means per vineyard they investigated between 12 and 15 wines in total. And then we're gonna look at some harvest data. Here you see the details for harvest state of Shiraz fruit from the Rosa zone from three seasons, five sites and two age classes. So we see here that in terms of bricks levels, we have only statistical differences for one site for two seasons okay so in this case here the young wines had higher bricks levels than the older vineyards but we cannot draw any real conclusion from this data because only differences in two cases then further down here we have another nice table everything is very complex in this in this research here so we're just gonna you know overfly it uh fly over it a bit and um, we're gonna see what's uh, the most important for us here you for instance see the reproductive and vegetative measures of shiraz vines from five vineyards okay from the five sites so you see here in terms of pruning mass so pruning mass is a indication for vigorousness we see that you know, first of all, I have to tell you that I highlighted only the statistical values, okay? And in terms of pruning mass, we have the highest pruning mass for site one in the old vineyards over two seasons. For site two, it's the opposite. So the younger vines were more uh, vigorous. And then for site four, it's again the old vines which were more vigorous. It says here that pruning mass per meter for old wines was equal to or greater than that of young wines in 11 out of 15 instances but only significant in five of these cases then we're going to look, look at fruit mass so at yield and we see here already that the old vines had a higher yield compared to the young wines same for the site two for the site three it seems to be the opposite way around so the young wines were a bit more productive than the old wines and um, at site five we have the old wines producing again high yields compared to the young wines it says here that fruit mass per meter of cordon and old wines was equal to or greater than young wines in 12 out of 15 locations across all sites and seasons old wines were found to have a statistically higher yield at three out of five seasons or three out of five sites across seasons. Then the last parameter I want to stress is yield to pruning mass. So this parameter here is an indication of how balanced the wine is. So if you have a ratio somewhere between four and 10, that means your wine is quite balanced. Whereas you, whereas, whereas you have a high ratio greater than 10, that means you certainly overcropped your wine and a low value indicates that your wine is quite vigorous but has a uh, low um, reproductive um, ability. So here we see that we only have statistical differences for site 2 and 3. So in site 2 the older wines had a higher yield to pruning mass ratio for two vintages and the same is the case for site 5. So we are 
you know, in, in a good ratio here, um, for side 2, 4 means that your wine is quite balanced. And um, those are actually the most important parameters here. As I said before, it, everything is very complex here and there's so much variation everywhere that we cannot look at every single detail. But one more thing to stress is this PCA, okay, Principal Component Analysis. And we see already that these old vineyards are quite clustered together, meaning they are quite similar. So they're clustered around bunch mass, fruit mass, berry number, trunk circumference, meaning you know old vineyards were positively correlated to yield, for instance, and trunk circumference, and the young vineyards negatively correlated to these parameters. So the only thing we can really say for sure in this study is that the older a vine gets, you know, the greater the trunk circumference is for the respective vine. So we have this regression here. And why is that actually important for us? It's important because, you know, if you have a lot of old wood, that means you have a good storage of carbohydrates, which the vine can utilize. So early on in the season, the vine is able to mobilize these starch reserves and establish a strong and fast canopy. So that's why it is important to uh, have a, you know, a good supply of old wood. But of course also old wood can harbor diseases as we know. Then let's go to our conclusion, which is down here. Vine age in this study was difficult to separate in terms of vine performance. According to PCA, all the wines had higher fruit mass per meter due to higher berry number per bunch. And then, importantly, even after more than 160 years of existence, a vine's ability to produce balanced growth, both vegetatively and reproductively, can still be influenced by management and season. Therefore, these findings suggest that wine age alone is not an overriding factor in balanced production and subsequent quality potential. Within the scope of the study, the effects associated with sight were greater than the effect of age. So again, we see in the study that it's very hard to do research in the topic of old vines because you have so much variation, you have different vintages, so you have to you know, take everything in consideration. But overall, the study showed clearly that you know, older vines seem to have higher yields compared to younger wines. And that's quite interesting because in literature you sometimes read the opposite that you know older wines produce less than younger wines um, and why is that why do you read that because of course old vineyards they they lack sometimes a lot of vines you know they, they miss vines because you know you have tractor disease you have people running them over you have diseases viruses and so on and that's actually um, why they think all the vineyards have uh, you know, a lower crop than younger vineyards. But we saw it is quite the opposite case here. And then the other thing to uh, acknowledge is that the uh, trunk circumference gets greater the older the vine is and that's important for your carbohydrate storage. Yeah, guys, uh, it's a complex topic, I know, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. That was our weekly episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit the subscribe button, of course, and stay tuned for more next week when we will compare traditional winemaking and reductive winemaking. Highly interesting paper, highly interesting topic. And yeah, that's all I have to say. See you next Monday. Have an awesome week. Okay.